What's growing on, gardeners? It's Sunday, December 3rd here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. Have you ever dreamed of growing your own citrus trees in ground in your climate, but you have always thought that where you live is just too cold to grow citrus? Well, I'm here to tell you that that probably is not correct. In fact, the majority of people that live in the United States alone can grow their own citrus trees in ground where they live. I live in North Carolina and I'm growing seven varieties of citrus in ground and I bet you can grow your own fresh citrus trees too and I'm going to share with you four super cold hardy varieties that you can plant. If you're new to the channel please subscribe and hit the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon store and spread shop links in the video description for everything I use in my garden and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear your support is greatly appreciated. Over generations citrus has developed the reputation of being a very cold sensitive tropical fruit but that's really not the case. Citrus are actually from the subtropical highlands of Asia for the most part so for that reason most varieties of citrus are tolerant of frost particularly sweet citrus. Now it is true that many of varieties of citrus don't do well with prolonged hard freezes. However, there are the most cold hardy varieties that can tolerate deep freezes as long as the temperatures eventually do rebound within the next anywhere from 8 to 24 hours or so. The most cold hardy of the top quality commercial varieties of citrus are hardy down to zone 8. Why is this a big deal? Well, the USDA just updated their hardiness zone maps for 2023 and now roughly half the landmass of the continental United States is zone 8 or warmer. The territory of zone 8 has been expanded pretty dramatically and now includes the entire south and it works its way up into the southeastern Virginia area into the Chesapeake and even some areas of southern coastal New Jersey. In the desert southwest zone 8 has been expanded dramatically all the way up into the Pacific Northwest to the Canadian border. And this is a really big deal because while about 50% of the landmass is now zone 8 or warmer. This encompasses most of the population centers, so the majority of the people living in the continental United States now live in a climate that is suitable for growing citrus in ground. Now, it is important to understand what the hardiness zone map upgrades mean. It does not mean that if something didn't grow for you because it was too cold 10 years ago, that it will grow for you now because your zone was updated. That is not the case. If it didn't grow in your location 10 years ago, it's not going to grow there now. What it does mean is that there's probably tens of millions of people living in the United States that actually can grow citrus and they're simply not aware. And also remember hardiness zones are simply an average. Half of your years are going to be at or colder than your hardiness zone. So you will need to protect your citrus trees on that off weather chance, just like I do. I have to protect my trees a few nights every single year, but it is worth it and I want to educate you on the subject. Don't worry, at the end of the video, I will show you exactly how I protect my trees when it gets unseasonably cold. And look, we're not talking about novelty varieties of citrus like trifoliate orange or trifoliate hybrids like citrandarins, something full of seeds and bitter that you don't really want to eat. We're talking about top quality commercial citrus, stuff that is better than anything you'll ever buy in a grocery store. The first variety of cold hardy citrus that I must feature in this video is the crown jewel of my garden, and that is the Owari Satsuma. This is the first tree that I ever planted in my yard when I moved into my house a little over five years ago. So this five-year-old tree is just producing off the charts. There are easily 200 oranges on this tree. We're talking an easy 50 to 100 pounds of oranges, and it produces like this season after season. Last year, harvest was just as incredible, I really started getting dramatic harvests as early as year three. Satsumas are mandarin oranges. This is legitimately a real orange tree. And what is amazing about this variety is it is tolerant to cold all the way down to about 12 degrees Fahrenheit once the tree is mature and established. It can briefly tolerate that temperature as long as once the sun comes up, the temperatures go back above freezing. Now for those of you in marginal zone eight climates like mine, one of the secrets to growing citrus is going to be planting your trees up against the south wall of your house. The south wall is the warm wall of your house. It absorbs sunlight all throughout the day and then radiates it back 
during the evening. And for those of you in the southern hemisphere watching this, it would be reversed. You'd want to plant your cold sensitive trees up against the north wall of your house. Now in order to make this possible, I have to get all of my citrus trees grafted onto trifoliate rootstock, which is the most cold hardy variety of citrus. It is a natural dwarf and it is deciduous. So any citrus tree that is grafted onto trifoliate rootstock is going to be naturally dwarfing. This tree is at its maximum height. I prune it and I maintain it to this height. So it's never going to get any taller than five feet with regular annual pruning and the roots are more shrub-like, not tree-like. That is why I'm able to plant this 30 inches from the foundation of my house. And it's very important that you understand this. You cannot get a random citrus tree where you don't know what it's grafted onto. You can't get one grafted onto standard rootstock. You cannot grow the tree from seed. Seed grown or standard citrus trees can grow to be 30 feet tall and that's obviously not appropriate to be planted near a house like this. So make sure you get your tree grafted onto trifoliate rootstock. That way if you're in a marginal climate like zone 8 like I am, you can plant it very close to your house for that wind protection and for radiating heat. Awari is my favorite variety of citrus and it does very well here in North Carolina. I get my harvests in early to mid-December every single year. But that is one of the only downsides of Awari. In terms of satsumas, it's one of the latest to mature. So if you live significantly north of me, you may not want to grow Awari because it is later season. Enter the Brown Select Satsuma. The Brown Select is just as cold hardy as Awari, but it ripens about three weeks earlier. This tree is obviously obviously a lot younger. This is my backup tree that will give me harvest about three weeks earlier than the Owari. It's only two years old, that's why it's so small. So if you live in a significantly cooler climate than mine and you're afraid that your fall days do not get warm enough to ripen the Owari, you may want to sub out the Brown Select. That is an excellent earlier variety. Cold hardy citrus number two is the Meyer lemon. That is what you see right here. Most lemon trees are not tolerant of frost and freeze. However, the Meyer lemon is. That is because it is a natural hybrid between a lemon and a satsuma. So it gets the taste of the lemon, but it has some of the cold hardiness of the satsuma imparted into it. And don't worry, you don't get fruit that tastes like oranges. These taste like true lemons. The only difference is they're a little bit lower in acid and they are much larger with a thinner skin and have easily three to four times the amount of lemon juice that a traditional lemon does. These are, in my opinion, so much more delicious than a true lemon. Of all the citrus varieties that I'm going to list in this video, the Meyer lemon is the most sensitive to cold. This tree can only tolerate very brief dips down to about 18 to 19 degrees Fahrenheit when it is well established. So because of that, it's going to be a little bit more challenging. However, I do have a trick that has allowed me to grow this one in ground. And that trick is this is an ungrafted tree. Now I know I just told you to get all of your trees grafted onto trifoliate rootstock, but the Meyer lemon is an exception. That's because it is a natural dwarf. So this is actually a rooted cutting and it's only on its third season. So because this Meyer lemon is growing on its own roots, I have this growing as a bush not a tree up against the south wall of my house. And the roots are going to be no threat to the foundation because this is just as dwarfing as a trifoliate. And if I ever have a severe winter and the tree gets killed down, even if it dies down to the roots, it's going to come back true to type. I bought this from a place called Brightleaf. They sold me the cutting very inexpensively. And again, this is only on its third season. Look at the production on this. It is absolutely absurd. I mean, look at this thing. I have over a hundred lemons on this little three-year-old tree. And when these are in season at the grocery store, they cost over 50 cents a piece. That is how coveted they are. And I have an unbelievable amount of them. The only bit of advice I will give you is that a Meyer lemon is somewhat thorned, so you have to be a little bit careful when you're going through and making your harvests and watch for those thorns. Well, I've given you an orange and a lemon, now I want to give you a lime. The bad news is that no true limes are suitable for zone eight without a tremendous amount of protection, more than I want to give any of my trees. 
but you can grow this natural hybrid called the Excalibur Red Lime. While the origins are somewhat unknown, this is thought to be a cross between a kumquat and a rangpur lime, which is red in color. Now there's not a lot of information about this variety of citrus right here, except it's supposed to be tolerant to the upper to mid teens. Now here, I've had this in a pot for over five years. And believe it or not, this is also trifoliate grafted. This is as big as the tree has ever gotten in this container in the five years I've had it. And look at the absurd production. This blooms a couple of times a year and it just produces these lime-like, beautiful, delicious little orbs on an ever-bearing pattern. It's absolutely insane. In fact, I have decided that so successful this tree has been and so cold hardy it has proved to me that I'm going to put this in ground in the rear of my property next year. Now because seeing is believing I want you to see that this is actually a grafted tree. You can see the graft on the bottom that is the trifoliate graft yet that is as large as the tree is. It's absolutely amazing and what's really cool about these fruits are the taste and the makeup of the peel. This is clearly a kumquat cross because if you squeeze the juice out of these lime like fruits they have a taste that's a cross between sort of a lime and an an orange so it's a little sweet but the peels are completely edible the peel is delicious it's like candy so you can eat the peel just like a kumquat and at the end of this video I'm going to show you what all of these different types of citrus taste like the fourth cold hardy citrus that I want to share with you is the kumquat there are effectively two very popular kumquat varieties out there the Mewa and the Nagami this tree right here is a Mewa kumquat which has a sweet interior and sweet skin then there's the Nagami which has a sweet skin but a very sour interior. I wanted the all sweet kumquat because the Nagami to me is just a little bit too tart. There are other varieties of kumquats out there that are less tart but I don't have any experience with them in terms of cold hardiness and I know that the Nagami and the Mewa can both grow pretty easily in zone 8. Now this tree is also grafted onto trifoliate rootstock and it is a little bit over two years old and this is as large as the tree has gotten. Now kumquats are naturally dwarfing so you can get them either as a rooted cutting or as a trifoliate graft and safely plant them up against the foundation of your house. However I ran out of room and I have these planted in my rear property. I will show you some cold protection methods later on but now that you see a kumquat you know that you can grow in ground in zone a sweet orange, a lemon, a lime, or at least a lime-like hybrid, and a kumquat. That basically covers your main bases of citrus. Now let's get into cold protection. There are basically three things I do to protect my citrus trees from cold. The first thing is I plant them up against a north windbreak or a south wall of the house. If the south wall of your house is unavailable, you can pick an east wall or a west wall as long as they get at least six hours of uninterrupted sun every single day. Having the warming radiating heat of a house will make things a lot easier. The second thing I do is I cover all of my trees in old style C9 incandescent bulbs. They have to be outdoor rated incandescent C9 Christmas lights and the reason why they have to be incandescent is they give off hundreds of watts of heat. One strand is 175 watts and all of that heat will keep the trees warm. You can't use LEDs. They do not give off sufficient heat. If you use LEDs you will not see any benefit. And then the third thing I use are these 60 gallon food grade pickle barrels. This is what they use to ship pickles and olive oil overseas. I can get these for about 25 bucks a piece locally. You can get them on Craigslist. I fill them full of water because they are black. They heat up in the sun all day and that 60 gallons of water radiates heat back all night. So what I do is I put two strands of incandescent lights on each tree and then they each get their own pickle barrel. And then I cover them on cold nights with a plant jacket, which is a breathable agricultural fabric that can stay on for months at a time because it lets light and air through as well as precipitation. So if you live in a significantly colder climate than me and you don't want to run outside and put a plant jacket on every single time it drops below 25 or 26 degrees, well, no problem, you can leave them on for months at a time. And I have my incandescent lights plugged into a wireless outlet and then 
I just turn them on like you see right there. I can turn them on from anywhere in the world. So if I'm vacationing in the winter and I know a cold front is coming, all I do is I cover all of my trees with the plant jackets before it's going to get really cold. I watch the weather if I'm going to be away and I turn them off and I turn them on wirelessly from my phone anywhere in the world. And that's all I do on those handful of cold nights a year where it's going to get colder than 25 degrees. And again, if you're in a location where it does get below 25 degrees regularly, no problem. You can just set a timer so the lights come on every single night and leave the plant jackets on for as long as necessary during the day. And the good news is if it doesn't get warm enough to break the freezing mark during the day, well, the plant jackets are going to capture all of that warmth. And it's also noted that while all of these trees are cold hardy to temperatures below 25 degrees, the citrus fruit is not. So the citrus fruit will actually become damaged usually at around 26 degrees or so, it can split. So it's important that if the trees are loaded with fruit, you be a little bit conservative and you protect them if it's going to drop into the mid 20s because you don't want to lose your harvest. As for the citrus in my rear property, I use no incandescent lights at all because we are just way too far from the house. So what I did was I planted them under this natural canopy of trees, which tends to block a lot of the frost and they each have their own individual water barrels for protection. Now, if you live in New Jersey or Maryland, this may not be enough protection for you because it might be too cold. But here in southeastern coastal North Carolina, this is all I need for my trees to survive long term. We got as cold as 14 degrees a couple of years ago. And just with the water barrels and plant jackets, they were at over 24 degrees. And by a comparison, while they were out at 24 degrees Fahrenheit, the stuff up against my house was only at about 30 degrees Fahrenheit. They were way warmer with the lights and the water barrels in tandem. But these varieties of citrus are all hardy to the mid 20s easily, no problem. So 24 degrees, even on these young trees, had pretty much no damage to them at all. So now I'm going to harvest some fruit from all of my trees. And it's always important to use some clippers to do that because citrus don't like being pulled right off the tree. It can actually tear the skin. So always harvest with a pair of shears of some sort. I was able to harvest fruits from my satsuma, my lemon, and my lime. I could not harvest any of the kumquats. They weren't ready yet. They fruit on a more ever-bearing schedule. So we'll start with the owari satsuma. Now, normally the owari satsumas look like this, but because it's still so early in the year, the larger ones are not ripe. So I had to pick a smaller one to get something that is closer to ripe, but all of them honestly could use a few more weeks. Then we have the Meyer lemon and we have the red lime. You can see just how huge this lemon is. The lemon's as big as an orange. So let's start with the Owari Satsuma. What's awesome about them is their zipper skin. All you have to do is stick your, th oops, stick your thumb in the bottom and the peel pops right off and then you get this wonderful segmented fruit and each of them break apart into wedges like you see right here. It really is that easy. We taste it. Mm. It is so unbelievably good. It is so much fresher and more fragrant than anything you'll get in a store. And it's funny that it's that good because it's not even ripe yet. Now I want to quickly cut into this underripe Satsuma right here because when you grow a Satsuma in isolation by itself, they tend to be seedless. But because I'm growing them near lemons and other citrus, they do get a couple seeds in it. It looks like this one has two seeds in them. Again, they're generally seedless when planted in isolation. They may have one seed, but if you grow them clustered with other citrus that cross-pollinate, you may get up to five seeds. So now let's break into the Meyer lemon. Now the Meyer lemon is a natural hybrid, so none of the seeds will ever grow true to type. You can't grow a Meyer lemon from seed. You can only get a grafted Meyer lemon tree or a rooted cutting. Now because it's a hybrid, it tends to be fairly seedy, but there is so much juice to a Meyer lemon that it doesn't really Really matter. And that right there is the Meyer lemon. Beautiful. There are a couple of seeds in there. I will compare it side by side to the Satsuma. You will see that they are almost equal fruits. That's because there is Satsuma in the lineage of this lemon. And what is interesting about this lemon is how not tart it is for a lemon. It has a lower acid content. It still will make you wince a little bit. Mm. Actually, um, Unbelievably so, this lemon is so good, it's so perfect, 
you could honestly eat this like an orange. It has all of the flavor of a lemon, but it doesn't have that astringency, so it doesn't make you wince in pain. Fantastic. It's a little tart, but in a good way. And then last but not least, we have this red lime, which again is a cross between a kumquat. And again, because it's a hybrid, it tends to be a little seedy. This is the most seedy of the fruit, but look how it is just dripping juice out of it. You're never going to get any kind of grocery store citrus that does that for you. So what we can do here is we'll pop out these seeds and the flesh of the red lime, like I said, is a little bit tart. It tastes like a cross between a true lime and some kind of orange. But what really makes this interesting is the candy-like outer skin that is completely edible. Mm. Now what is amazing about that is if you were to eat just the flesh on its own, it would be too sour. But because the skin is so sweet, just like a kumquat, it makes it all bearable. Now I know this video was chock full of so much information, it could be overwhelming. The gears in your head may be spinning and you don't know where to start. But I'm here to tell you that citrus isn't just for the deep south and California. I'm talking to you, Maryland and Virginia and southern Oklahoma and you guys in Portland and Seattle and the surrounding areas and southern New Mexico, maybe even you guys in Cape May County, New Jersey or Atlantic City. You may be able to grow these things in your backyard. I'm not in the tropics here. I'm in North Carolina. We've already had multiple nights in the 20s this year and everything is thriving because I protected everything. Now don't worry, I'm going to make this very easy for you. Down in the video description, I'm going to link to all of the exact items that I use to protect my citrus trees when it gets otherwise too cold or we have those off cold nights here and there. And remember, you can leave this stuff on for months at a time if you live in a far more northern climate where it stays cold for a prolonged period of time. You'll be able to basically make your own sustainable greenhouse for the trees that breathes and you don't have to worry about venting them. So down in the video description, as well as the items I use to build these things, I'm also going to link to my cold protection playlist. If this is something you want to do, I recommend that you go through the videos slowly over time throughout the winter in your leisure and absorb all of the information. I have done all of these things. I have everything that you need to know to be successful growing trees like this in your yard. And last but not least, if you want to know what I think is the best source to buy citrus, I buy every single one of my grafted citrus trees from Stan McKenzie at McKenzie Farms in Scranton, South Carolina. He doesn't have a website that you can order over, but if you go to Google Maps and you Google McKenzie Farms, Scranton, South Carolina, and give his phone number a call, he will ship the trees to you. Just tell him I sent you and that you want these trees grafted onto trifoliate rootstock. If you want a rooted cutting, I really recommend the website Brightleaf. The rooted Meyer lemon that I got from them is fantastic. And that right there is how I successfully grow citrus trees in ground here in southeastern North Carolina. Now look, if you're significantly north of me, it is true that not all zone eights are created equal. It will be a lot harder in zone eight Maryland or New Jersey than it is here in zone eight North Carolina. But that being said, I urge you to take the risk and try anyway. It's about $40 for a grafted citrus tree, give or take, and it will just be a fun experiment for you. If you fail, worst case you had a really fun time doing it and maybe the failure will be for a reason you can deduce and you can replant and pick up the pieces and learn from that mistake and maybe you'll be successful the second time and if you are successful i'm telling you you will be thrilled to have these wonderful trees in the ground so everybody i sure hope you found this video helpful if you did please make sure to hit that like button subscribe to the channel and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when i release more videos like these again if you're curious about all of the products that i used in this video to be successful growing citrus as well as everything I use in real life in my garden in general. They are all linked down below on my Amazon storefront link in the video description. And while you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. All right, Dale, I have to go to the grocery store, so that means you're going to get your Kong. Do you want your Kong? Okay. Ooh, look at that frozen peanut butter Kong. Dale, come. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, you take this gentle. Oh, <laughs> too excited. Good boy. All right, sweetheart. I have to go to the store. I have to go get your dinner. We got to get Dale some meat, and I'll be right back home, buddy.